Hello, so in this video we will be demonstrating the workflow for creating a terrain in Unity. We will also be taking a quick look at a few related assets that can be a whole lot of help. So if you're trying to create a terrain in Unity, the first thing you're going to notice are these default terrain tools. There's not a whole lot here, but that's a good thing because we don't want to clutter up our project with extra things that we're not using. So the terrain tools is a package that is found in the Unity repository and it's a few gigabytes in size. I do recommend making a new project for your trains and then exporting your final project in order to leave all of this clutter behind. Now most of the file size in here comes from just the texture files, the height maps and the, the brushes. They're just really large images and they take up a lot of space. But in addition to that, there are some artistic tools for sculpting, there's some pretty neat stuff for hydraulic effects as well. Now with these basic tools, um, we can already do quite a lot, or at least somebody like Nature Manufacturer can do quite a lot. Um, this is one of my favorite artists on the asset store. Everything he makes is just absolutely gorgeous. And in addition to that, you know, he does sell completed levels. So it's, it's a pretty cool thing to find. Um, another tool that's worth taking a quick look at is called Microverse. This is fairly new and it is a real-time non-destructive environment editor. Um, and if you want to know what that means, you really do need to just come check out this project. project. Um, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing what it's capable of. We will not be looking at this though. We're going to be looking at Gaia. Um, now I, I don't have the Pro Edition. I just have the Normal Edition. It goes on sale pretty often as well. And I do recommend this. It's really, really powerful. And it does about everything I need. I'm actually not even sure what features I'm missing. Um, anyway, so moving on. Um, the actual foliage that I'm going to be using, I've kind of kit bashed from a few different places. I've, I've taken the grass out of Lordenfell here. And I'm also using the shader from Quibbly. Um... Oh, and I'm also using the rocks as well from Nature Manufacturer. So I've got a little bit from everywhere. If you would like to see a different type of environment, um, Game Dev Bits here has some pretty good tutorials on Gaia. And he demonstrates um, a Sinti spawner here, a Sinti biome. And he also talks also on how to make these spawners. He has some pretty helpful hints mixed in to his videos. Um, also up here in my tabs, I have Microsplat to tell you guys about. Um, if you're making a train, you probably want to be using this. It it does more than I can say. It, it supports more layers. It has lots of lots of different modules that you can add in as well. They aren't necessary, but if you want like footprints and sand or something, you know, he, he's got a module for that. And it's also, I guess, worth taking a quick look at um, other engines to see how they do things. Unreal is pretty unreal a lot of the times. They have uh, virtual texturing, and then they used, then they they have the ability to use um, node-based spawners on top of these virtual textures. I don't entirely know how all this works. Um, you know, I work with Unity, but I do keep an eye on some of these. It's some pretty amazing technology here. And lastly, uh, Godot unfortunately does not have any core engine support for terrain. That's something they're going to be leaving for um, third parties. And I have heard a rumor that uh, Gaia, the procedural worlds here, may be doing something to support Godot. I, although that's completely unconfirmed, it's just a rumor that I've heard. But I, I'm excited for it. I really do hope that happens. So anyway, let's dive into um, the engine. All right, um, in this project, I already have Gaia imported, and I have an empty scene here where we can start working in. In addition to this, I also have all of my art files imported down here. Um, now, in order to understand the types of files I have imported, it's good to quickly talk about how terrain data works. Um, from the perspective of terrain data, only three types of assets exist. Grass, details, and trees. I personally don't use grass, I think it looks bad, um, but it is the most simple of the three. Now, a grass is just a texture, 
and it faces the camera. And that's all there is. And the problem with that, though, is that if you were to stand over top of a texture and look down at it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be invisible, right? Because, you know, imagine having a piece of paper and you stand it on edge. It's, you know, you're not going to be able to see it. Um, but that's not to say this isn't useful. A lot of games do use this style. And especially in low poly games, it does it does have a, a really good home there. Uh, now I use um, for grass details. Now a detail is a mesh object. That's all there is to it. Um, and we can see a mesh object here. And you can see very quickly that it has some resemblance to uh, a texture, a grass. And that it's just you know a flat image that's going to be facing out except these don't follow the camera they just kind of sit there and as you walk around the mesh object you can see that these textures are carefully placed so that there's always some something visible it's not perfect of course but it's kind of the best you can get i think um now lastly our trees um, trees are different from a detail in that they have a collider and they also have an LED group. And that's really the only difference between a tree and a, a, a detail is that trees have a collider and an LED group. Now another property that isn't going to be available to trees is um, rotation. So let's say you have like an old tree and you want them to kind of lean over a little bit. That's just, that's not available with a terrain tree. You have to use a game object. All right, so in order to create the world, we can bring open Gaio's little manager here. Um, in terms of world size, I do like to use custom. I think um, a little grid of 512 by 512s works really well. In terms of performance and memory size, you'll have to play around to see what you know you like, and also what your graphics card likes. Because if you if you make these too large, you you will run out of memory. Um, but yeah. Also, I do like to reduce this. It helps with the uh, density for the spawners. It's not so much about overall performance. It's these are tricky numbers. You have to kind of tinker with them to get things to spawn out in a way that you like. And th these numbers are just things that I've kind of settled in on. Um, and of course, I've already created a biome here. This, you know, there's a lot of tinkering that has gone into this, but it's done. And once it's done, it pretty much just falls together. Um, So, something to note about uh, terrain data is that it is, you know, it, it starts at zero. And so if you want to have underwater scenes, or if you want to dig underneath the ground, um, you don't want your sea level to be at zero, because that's that's absolute zero. So I, I put my sea level a little bit above zero, which means we need to raise the base height as well. And that's it. Um, that's it. And so now we're going to have our terrain. Uh, Gaia includes a bunch of stamps for us. And we're just kind of randomizing it here. Now one quick thing I will say about um, spawners um, it wasn't obvious to me at first, so so I will mention it, and that is to think in terms of textures, think in terms of your terrain layers. Um, the only texture, the only where in any of my spawners that we think about the water level is the grass layer. Um, you, you, you'll probably have to play around with Gaia in order for that to make sense, but let's say we're placing ferns my ferns are placed where there are leaves and where there are crabgrass. 
and crabgrass is not placed on sand, nor is crabgrass placed on top of leaves. And so, it, if that makes sense, um, you know, a fern will never be placed underneath water this way. But yeah, that's that's kind of the, the gist of it. And so we can spawn, oops. There, so spawn world. And that's all there is to it. Um, the reason it's so shiny here is I only have normal maps. I don't have smoothness or ambient occlusion, roughness. I don't have all that extra stuff imported here. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Gaia in 10 minutes. Have a good one.